Now, next we have Captain David Forktongue and oh, Michael oh, Bloom oh. at the uh, River TV Studios performing the Haunted Pirate Show. Now, as I understand it, you've got a little problem with Captain David. Oh, that's not a little problem. Captain David is a big problem for our fair city of uh, the Watch City Festival. Every year, he eludes capture. But I'm going to get him this year. That, this may be the year. I certainly hope justice is served. So, everybody who wants to see Captain David, better see him this year before I toss him in the hoose cow. I'm Minstrel Mike. I'm here with Captain David Forktongue to bring you more tales of piracy and the supernatural here on Sal's show. <laughs> Let's enjoy the video! Now, in me life of piracy, as well as pillaging and looking for treasure, and, of course, enjoying some time with some of the wenches in the tavern, I have always liked to learn stories of other pirates and share them with numerous people. I'm going to share them with you today on Sal's show. Only these stories that you're going to hear are stories like no other. These are the stories that I learned when I crossed over the river Styx into the land of the dead. <laughs> Aye, but before we get into that, Minstrel Michael, if you could please do a song for the crows. A song for the crows. As I was walking o'er the lane, I heard Glotorg is mackin' the main. The chain and chain, the tither did sail. Where shall we gang and dine the day? Oh, where shall we gang and dine the day? Over behind yon old fell dyke, I what there lies a new slain knight, and nobody can that he lies there. But his hawk and his hound and his lady fair, oh, hawk and his hound and his lady fair, and his hound is tell the hunting game. Hawk to fetch the wild fowl hang, and his lady's tail and never made oh. So we mon mock our dinner sweet, oh. We mon mock our dinner sweet. And if you sit on his white horse bane, I'll peck out his body blue wing. Hey, a lot goes golden hair out to feed our nest when it grows bare. Oh, feed our nest when it grows bare. There's money in for him, Max Marr. I want to ken where he is gone. Or his white bones when they are bare. Shall blow forever, Marrow. Wind shall blow forever, Marrow. Wind shall blow forever, Marrow. Wind shall blow forever, Marrow. Wonderful, wonderful, Minstrel Michael. Very heartwarming story. Well, let me tell you, folks, in talking about stories, when you're a pirate, oftentimes, what we usually like to do is we like to meet in various taverns around the world. And oftentimes, we share tales of our own times at sea. And also, we share tales that have to do with other pirates as well. Now, oftentimes, we'll steal stories from each other and claim them as our own. This story is one of the more gruesome tales of piracy. It tells of the tale of a pirate named Captain Bones. Now, you won't find Captain Bones in any of the history books. For, you see, he was so gruesome 
that no historian dared even to write about him. Now, Captain Bones would not only hunt and sail for treasure, but any victim that got in his way, he would draw his cutlass and he would not only kill the men, but slice their bodies up until he got to the heart of the bones of those victims. And he took the bones back aboard his ship and displayed them all over the ship. He would use these bones to decorate his ship and specifically his ship's captain. Leg bones hanging from the ceiling, whole skeletons on the floor of his cabin. He even had a necklace made of, go of bones and he took a man's skull once, had the ship's carpenter shape it in to a lovely mug so he could drink his grog out of it. Aye, it came to pass though with Captain Bones. His own crew even feared him so much that none of them would ever dare to approach except for one who I'll tell you about a little bit later. Now, Captain Bones, a lot of people would say, why did he keep such a vast collection of bones distributed all around his ship? Well, some people believe that he was a superstitious man and he believed that the bones would bring him good luck. Others believe that he kept the bones to keep the entire crew in line. Very few people believe Captain Bones kept those bones because he liked them. And as I said, no one ever dared question Captain Bones except one man. This all came to pass, you see, when old Captain Bones and his crew attacked another ship. And he went to the captain of the ship and he killed the man. But instead of slicing his body from top to bottom, all he did was slice the hands off of the captain. And he took the hands and brought them back to the ship. And he had a throne in his ship's cabin. And he displayed one hand on either arm of his throne chair. Now, at this point, the crew all agreed. Captain Bones has gone too far. And he and he must be stopped for collecting all these bones. Hi. So they went to the first mate and they told the first mate, ye must speak with Captain Bones. Having bones aboard the ship is one thing. Aye, but the rotting stench of the human skin molding on the hands was enough, enough to make the toughest sea dog ill. So when the first mate confronted Captain Bones about what he had done, Captain Bones drew his cutlass and he drove it through the heart of the first mate. And then he turned to the crew and says, well, does anyone else think I've gone too far? <laughs> but that night, the stars twinkled in the clear night sky until a big fog rolled in and suddenly there was an ear piercing scream coming from the captain's quarters. The crew ran into the quarters to see what was the matter. Aye, and they looked down and they saw the body of Captain Bones had been all bent and broken and he was lying on the ground dead. The ship's doctor was called in to examine the body and he even decreed that every bone in Captain Bone's body has been ripped from stem to stern. And then one crewman cried out, look, look. And as they looked around the cabin, all the bones were starting to vanish. And the captain's own treasure disappeared as well. This scared the men. Abandon ship! Abandon ship! As they made their way to the lifeboats. Hi, but it was a big ship and all, already one of the lifeboats was sent to the sea. Oh God. 
They all piled in all at once into another lifeboat. And they sailed out through the fog of the night. And then they stopped in the middle of the ocean. Oh my, what they saw was a lifeboat heading towards them. And above the lifeboat, it looked like there was a lantern, but who was holding the lantern? They didn't see a body. And as the lifeboat got closer and closer, I, they saw a skeleton holding the lantern. Now there were little, little bits of flesh on the skeleton's body, but very little. And as the skeleton and the crews, both the lifeboats, got right into range, they heard the voice of the skeleton cry out, Too far! Too far! Too far! Ladies and gentlemen, the strange tale of Captain Bones. <laughs> and there we have it, another tale that thinly disguised history of himself. Ooh, but it chilled me through the bones, isn't it? I would oh, not want to hear it is. one of Captain yes. David's tales while I was out on the tra trail with just a campfire. Cer certainly not for small children. Oh, yes.